Hi again folks, welcome to Meaningful Money. I'm in a beautiful woods. Can you see the bluebells behind? All looking very pretty, so far deserted, but I'm on a public footpath so there's every chance I'm going to get uh, disturbed, but never mind. I have notes with me as well today because I've got some numbers which I uh, can't retain up here. Now, this is uh, the third uh, principle, if you like. Um, I've called them foundations up to now. I think I'm going to change that though. Uh, the principle, uh, bedrock of financial planning. We've had begin with the end in mind. We've had spend less than you earn, and the third and final main principle really is to harness the power of compound interest. Now compounding, if you remember from school, <coughs> is where uh, interest, uh, if we'll talk about interest for the time being anyway, is added onto interest. So simply, uh, if you have £100 in the bank today, and your interest rate is 5%, while ignoring tax and things like that, at the end of the first year, you will have £5 in interest, so your bank balance will be £105. Now, if you take that £5 interest out and spend it, then you'll still have £100 left. But if you leave that £5 interest in, and the interest rate stays at 5% for the second year, well, this time you will get 5% interest on your £105. So instead of getting £5 in interest in year two, you'll get £5 and a bit. Now, that might not sound like a lot when we talk about numbers in the hundred pounds and five pounds and things like that, but the difference it can make over time is enormous. And I wanted to just show you the difference that can make. So here we're talking about um, adding interest onto interest, but also the power of time uh, and how that can uh, exponentially increase returns on uh, portfolio uh, investments. So, for example, and this is where I look at my notes. Okay, now. I'm 35 years old, I know, I don't look it, uh, 35 stone more like, but not quite. Um, <clears throat> now, in my first week of my pounds and pounds challenge, I didn't spend £18.70 by bringing in lunch and not buying Bourneville chocolate and things like that. So I've saved £18.70 uh, in my first week. So I'm going to use that as the basis for uh, these investments I'm now going to talk about and see the difference that it will make. So let's say I did that every week and £18.70 I saved every week and instead I put that into an investment. Okay, so we're going to assume £18.70 per week goes into an investment and we're going to assume that that investment does 5% per year every year. Now I'm 35 now, so we're going to take it to age 65, so 30 years exactly. Okay, what does that £18.70 per week scale up to? This is where I need the numbers. Well, £18.70 over 30 years at 5% becomes £67,412. So by eating Bourneville and drinking too much Diet Coke, I am robbing myself of £67,000 over the next 30 years. Now we've got to take inflation off that and things like that, but that's still an immense amount of money. But here's where it gets truly frightening. I'm 35, so I've got 30 years left until the notional state pension age of 65, which will have gone up by then anyway. But let's say I'd started this 10 years earlier, and I'd instead, when I get to age 65, had been paying in for 40 years. Well, instead of £67,000, the number is £123,607. So by adding just an extra 10 years worth of saving, I've nearly doubled my end result. So that shows you the power of compounding and the power of time to allow that compounding to roll up. Simple message there is, of course, the earlier st you start, the better. But for those of you who are uh, older than I am, and even a message to myself, please don't worry if you're only just now starting and wish you'd started earlier. Now, what happens if I put that money into a pension where there is tax relief, so the government currently gives you money when you invest in a pension? Well, over 30 years uh, time scale at 5%, my £18.70 a week would have become £84,266, £84,000 just over, uh, towards my uh, retirement. Again, if I'd have started 10 years ago though and had been making that investment for 40 years, uh, this pension fund would be £154,509, grand by not eating chocolate and drinking Diet Coke. It's incredible, really. Now, David Bach, whose book, The Automatic Millionaire, you can get in the bookstore, he calls this the latte factor. It's the meaningless, apparently, small amounts of money we just spend on stuff. Now, you can see, though, that those small amounts of money add up, thanks to the power of compound interest. 
But compounding doesn't just apply to interest, cash in the bank. It can also apply to investments in the true sense of the word, uh, things like shares and bonds and things. Just to illustrate that, had you invested uh, £10,000 in the FTSE All Share, which is an index designed to give a gauge of uh, all kinds of different sizes of companies uh, in the UK, Let's say you'd invested £10,000 when that uh, index began in January 1986 and you left that money in till today. Well, the capital value, because remember shares can go up and down depending on you know, whether people want to buy those companies or not, the capital value would have been £31,927. So over the last 24 and a bit years, your £10,000 would have grown to £31,927. Now that's not bad. You know, so 320% growth. But shares, remember, produce dividends. And if instead of spending those dividends, you'd have rolled up the money, well, your £10,000 would instead have become £93,694. So by reinvesting dividends, your 31000 inst instead of having £31,927, you'd have had £93,694, three times the amount, just by reinvesting dividends. And that shows you the power of compounding and reinvesting. So it really is not to be sniffed at. Um, when you are organising your portfolio, you have to come, uh, bear in mind the benefits of rolling up income and choose your investments wisely, which of course we'll get to uh, as these videos go on. But as a pillar of financial planning, Harnessing the power of compounding is essential. So I hope that's been useful. Um, the numbers uh, will have come up on the bottom of the screen, and I'll probably put them in a PDF as well so you can see them in your own time. But um, we've got a, just a couple more of these principles uh, videos to do now, and uh, I hope they'll be useful. And then we'll get into the meat, how to uh, build your financial plan.